we all know women, or maybe you are one of those women, who is intelligent, who is successful, who is good looking, fantastic, you know, the full deal. But she doesn't seem to attract men, or if she attracts them, they're the wrong men, or she cannot keep their attention. While at the same time, we know women that are probably not the biggest beauties, uh, maybe not as successful, maybe not so bright and intelligent, but they seem to be showered by presence, by attention, male attention, by uh, devotees, male devotees that follow them and will marry them even 20 years later, only if the woman gives them a sign. And we wonder where is this magic coming from? How, what do these women have more than I do? Why? I'm, I mean, I'm prettier, I'm more successful, I'm funnier. Where does their power come from? And in this video, I'll teach you exactly where this power comes from. And it comes from the sacral chakra. This is situated where the female womb is. If you have a female body, you do have the sacral chakra, this power. This is the second chakra. And women who naturally have so many adorers and men shower them with attention, presence, and uh, give their hearts to them, who attract men, they naturally are either born with really powerfully developed second chakra or over life and experiences, they learn how to generate more energy in this chakra. And uh, so most of these women don't do it consciously. They're not aware of doing it. Or some of them, as we said, are born with this already. Especially, for example, women who have uh, a lot of water in their horoscope. But I don't want to go into astrology much. Or, uh, or women who do specific things in their life, who've learned to do them over time. And I'll teach you how to generate this energy in the sacral chakra, which generates this amazing feminine magnetism to attract things to you, to attract men, to attract financial stability. I mean, everything good into the life of a woman that can come uh, is first started to be generated in the sacral chakra. And I will show you also what disperses and what wastes the energy of the sacral chakra. And what is the sacral chakra? It's the second chakra here around your womb where we have a pot belly. All women kind of tend to have one. Uh, and this is the chakra of sexual energy. Uh, and I'm not saying that women can only generate things in their life and men if they have strong sexuality. But this is, this is the chakra of creativity, the chakra of balanced emotions. And when this chakra is out of sorts, so it's drained constantly, women do not have the energy to attract magnetically to them. And let's first start with which things take away the power Take away the energy of the chak sacral chakra. And I'll depict the sacral chakras here. If this is a woman, okay. <laughs> here are the breasts. Oh, this is how we indicated. And this is the womb here. And there is another chakra below, which is the first chakra. And the sacral is the second chakra. Ah. Uh, and if, for example, the first chakra is not stable, it starts drawing energy from the second chakra, from the sacral chakra of creativity and femininity and sexual magnetism. And what is the first chakra? It's the chakra of survival. So if a woman does not have the minimum, basically if a woman has to worry all the time about how is she going to pay the rent, um, how is she going to feed herself? Or how is tomorrow going to be? The first chakra is chakra of fear, of uh, stability. If she doesn't have the minimum financial stability, which on the first level is financial stability, survival, she will be constantly drawing energy from the second chakra, which is our generator of energy. All women tend to have more energy in the sacral, second chakra. And if they don't have the stability, even from a childhood, this might have happened. They have, might have been, uh, you know, in poor family, ne never knowing where their next meal is coming from. Or even they might be nowadays, you know, in their 30s, um, not having financial stability, not knowing, you know, okay, I can pay next uh, bill, but uh, after that, the second month, I'm not sure how I'll be able. If they always preoccupied with survival on the material level, this starts draining their femininity. Imagine a mother, a single mother of three, just running around trying to make the bills, to pay the bills, to feed the kids, doing all those, you know, things that are for security, for stability. She 
doesn't have time to generate. She doesn't have the energy. The energy that she needs for survival is drawn from her magnetic sexual center. And that's why many women that are so preoccupied with survival, with uh, putting bread on the table, with uh, you know taking care of their kids or everything, they they do not they don't even feel sexual desire. They do not even feel the desire to make themselves pretty, you know. Uh, and this starts drawing from them. And so, this can happen due to the woman's own fault. For example, she does not, either she is placed there because of karmic conditions, or uh, if uh, she is not wise with her finances. For example, I had a friend who had a powerful sacral chakra. Uh, really, she drew men like a magnet. Amazingly, I mean, we would sit in a bar in the corner and she would even wear dark clothes so she would merge with the background, she would not be noticed at all. But men would pull towards her, they would be drawn like magnets. And I said, how do you do this? And one of the things she always said that since young she had to work. She, had, she came from a poor family, but she always made sure that in the bank she had like five, ten thousand pounds, her safety net, so she feels secure, so she doesn't feel that if, if, you know, if she doesn't find the man, she would starve, or if she doesn't, if something goes wrong, she has her safety net, so her fears, she so kind of skillfully managed her finances to a level that she had stability and she was not fearful about her uh, survival in a sense. So this is one good thing that a woman who wants to stop depleting her sacral chakra should do. She should make sure that she has some, she doesn't have to have millions, no, but like some safety net in the bank, just save two, three thousand pounds or dollars or something that if next month you lose your job or something happens, you have somewhere to fall back to so you stop worrying about those things. When you stop worrying about those things, you start drawing and generating more energy into the sacra, into the feminine attractive magnetism chakra. Or women who are, for example, with men who they always, who get, cannot provide for them. Okay, it sometimes happens. Sometimes you might be in a relationship with love someone, he loses his job for two, three years, maybe he changes a career, and you have to be the provider for the main uh, survival things. It happens, you know, but if you're constantly in such a state, say in a marriage or relationship with someone who can never provide for the woman, she never feels confident, secure with him, she never feels, she always feels like she's the provider or she, she not feels but does it always, she has to provide financially, securely for them, for their survival, this will deplete her femininity, this will take away from her feminine power, so if it happens for over many years, maybe this is the wrong person for you because he will steal away your power, you know, because he makes you focus on a lower ch um, chakra, which is a male chakra. It's not a female chakra. The lower survival chakra is much more developed in males. And this is the right way because they should be the initial providers. So you should, when you're choosing a male, at least the first thing you should look for is that this person can provide some security on the survival basic level from you. If you decide to get pregnant, which is the sacral chakra, the second feminine chakra of creativity where we create a child, you have to know that even if you leave your job, this man can provide for you for the duration of two, three years while the toddler is growing. And if you choose a man who always makes you insecure, never provides from his first chakra, which is the male, where the male provides from, then the woman gets depleted. Then the woman puts all her energy into survival. And usually these relationships are not more satisfying and not happy. The woman doesn't feel so feminine anymore. And let me show you another chart, a bit bigger. If this is the man and this is the woman, wait a second, I'll make it a bit bigger. <laughs> okay, the man's first chakra is much bigger usually than a woman's. The woman's first chakra is smaller because this is the survival chakra. Men are the survival beasts, you know, they are the ones that have been providers, you know, usually from the dawn of humanity. And usually a man can give from this chakra to the woman. And this is the correct way for it to be. If the roles are reversed for longer than a few years, this drains the second chakra of the woman, which is usually 
has where woman can generate naturally more energy, while the man's second chakra, the creative um, chakra, magnetic sexual chakra, is smaller. So he looks there to draw for a woman. That's why men get charged up by women in intimacy with women. So a woman gives her creative feminine energy to a man. Woman gives from the sacral chakra to the second man's chakra, which is not, his sacral chakra naturally is not so developed. This is the feeling center. We all think feelings are here, but actually feelings are generated, emotional stability, and is generated in the womb here. And the man gives here to the woman. So initial stability, initial safety. Um, it's best to find a man who can provide this. If the roles are reversed for longer than a few years, this drains the woman. It has a really kind of takes all her power away. Um, for a few years, it's okay. Maybe for a year or two, you know. Maybe you, uh, you've been in a relationship that you are providing for the man more and not having any security from him, but this is draining relationship. So the woman... The man gives to the woman, and look, male organs, whatever the man has to give, the organs there ex, uh, extra, uh, like protrude. The male first chakra is at his genitals, the penis protrudes. The female's first chakra is the vagina, and it's inwards, so she receives there. The female's second chakra is the womb, so the pot belly. It always in most women protrudes, even in me, you can see it very well, the pot belly. In men, they're usually flat here. Then the third chakra of a woman is always smaller, uh, in most cases, sorry. This is the natural way. And in men, it's much bigger. So here, men give to women. And the third chakra is here around the stomach, about around the solar split, uh, in the well, stomach area, I would say. Uh, and <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, uh, and uh, a man uh, here, he's usually the upper part of the stomach protrudes more while for a woman is flat. Then the other chakra of a woman that is more developed is the heart chakra where her breasts are. So the breasts protrude. This is where a woman gives to a man more in the natural order of things. You know, a man around the breast area around here is more concave. If you notice in men, usually their belly a bit protrudes here, but their solar split is like goes inside a bit. Where a woman, uh, uh, where the solar split is, is where her breasts are. So she gives from there. The energy from this chakra goes towards the man. The man receives it. This, uh, this chakra is the chakra of unconditional love, of loving someone. And let's see how the energy flows. So the man provides the initial security for a woman. A woman can start then generating with this energy that she gets from the man, generating more, when she has the security, she can grow even more and more energy in the second chakra, so it's not depleted into her taking care of financial, you know, uh, I'm not saying women should not, but taking care of survival all the time, you know, fighting there to survive. So she starts generating this powerful sexual energy, and she can give it to the man. And this sacral chakra is the chakra of joy and pleasure. What men cannot generate within themselves is this feeling of satisfaction, of peace and joyfulness. Only a woman can give it or a man who practices spiritual practices can give this to himself. You know, more evolved men, basically. So a woman gives the sweetness of life to man. Uh, and a man is drawn. Men, especially who are... Who, uh, more healthy men, they're drawn to women with powerful sacral chakra because uh, when she gives him the sacral chakra to his sacral chakra, it feeds from his sacral chakra, which doesn't have energy, it feeds his third chakra, which is the chakra of success. Success in the world, uh, such people, such men who have very, uh, who have very strong, um, which is called like the third chakra, uh, they can become successful in the world. They can start making millions or become directors or uh, have very good social status in life. So a woman who gives from the sweetness of life to a man uh, who, <clears throat> who gives him and who does not try to manipulate and control man through sex, which often is what women do, they misuse the power of their sacral chakra, but who uh, gives, you know, 
kindness, agreeableness, love, and creative energy to a man. She feeds his upper chakra, the third one, which makes him even more successful, which makes him more ambitious. And from here, men can either return back to a woman from his third chakra, which is the healthy way. This is when a man, because he's empowered from her loving and sweet, caring, loving sacral chakra of femininity, through love, through intimacy, through sexual uh, pleasures, to, through emotionally balancing him, this is what the woman does through the sacral chakra, uh, then he becomes more ambitious, more successful in life, uh, and what he gives back to the woman is he, he generates, first of all, he brings status back to her because the third house is the status. Maybe he marries her and because he's, he has high status, he receives that. Uh, the woman also receives the status. Um, she gets luxuries in life, which is third chakra, you know, much more above just the survival level. And she also gets inspired to find her own power. And I'm not saying women cannot find it on your own. We'll talk how it happens if a woman does this within herself, without a man. But this is when you're in a couple, how the energies flow most healthily. So a healthy man, when the woman gives him the sweet loving energy of the sacral chakra, of femininity, of joy, of creative energy, of agreeableness, of um, acceptance and loving, accepting him rather than trying to change him all the time, rather than trying to, you know... It's almost like devotion. The sacral chakra is giving him devotional appreciation and belief in him. The sacral chakra creates a woman. If a woman has a strong sacral chakra, she, be she believes in the man. Even if he's nobody right now, she keeps believing and this creates a much stronger influx into the third chakra of man so he succeeds. And there is a saying that behind every strong man there is a strong, there is like a powerful woman, but it, she's powerful from her sacral chakra with her feminine energy, not with her masculine energy. Uh, and you, uh, and if, uh, uh, and then he gives empowers the woman so she can become more of who she's supposed to be. She gets status. She can create her own business, something, something that succeeds ahead in life a lot more, you know, that gets recognized. Recognition is this third chakra. And then the woman from, <coughs> from uh, when the woman receives all this, the status and the recognition uh, and the self-esteem and finds herself through the energy of the man, she gives him from her heart chakra unconditional love. And then the man really can get so far ahead. But some men, when they get from the second chakra of the woman, you know, this love and intimacy and caring that the woman can give and creativity, they can block, not return back to the woman's third chakra. They can get blocked. And they can use, because the third chakra, the ch third chakra grows through the woman. They get power, they succeed, but they start controlling the woman through the power, through the money. They try, they start you know, pressing the woman down, like I've known many successful men whose women are loving, caring, supportive, you know, their sacral chakra is good. But the man does not return back to their third chakra. They do not empower them. So the man wants to keep the woman at home, not becoming more of who she is, not allowing her to blossom, to find her vocation and career in path, a path in career, you know. So this is like, this is wrong again. There is interruption of the flow. There is like, he blocks it, so the flow, this is not a healthy relationship. The flow is not flowing properly. So the healthy one is the man first initially gives financial or at least stability and security in her head. She should know that and she should believe that he can provide sooner or later, even if he's not so well financially now. Sooner or later, he'll be secure enough to do this. Then the woman starts blossoming as a woman. Her sacral chakra opens up. She starts being more open to sex. She starts being more, you know, uh, inclined to uh, be feminine, receptive and agreeable to believe in him. And then she gives him even more for him to succeed in a big way. Third chakra is doing important things in the world, being recognized. And then the healthy thing for him is to give, to empower back the woman uh, and maybe help her start her own business or explore her own interests, you know, come into her own power rather than suppress her. And then the woman gives him unconditional love. The woman gives him from the heart chakra, which is like the proper beautiful love. This is the right flow, you know. But what happens sometimes? Some women say you're single still, you know. 
let's say there is no such male energy in you. Uh, and you have to, we said, uh, if you've already kind of sorted out your finances, if you're already not having to fight all the time for financial security, uh, and you feel kind of emotionally, at least stable to some extent financially, you're not fearful about the future all the time, then your feminine power starts growing, even if you're single. So you arrange your financial matter as well, and you start, you know, uh, not only financial, basically proper survival things. You start generating more feminine power in you. And then some women need this feminine power for to doing great things, to develop their third chakra. And they start using and drawing the sacral power for big achievements in life. For example, becoming a CEO, becoming a director, becoming, you know, competing in a male world and getting on top and, uh, you know, having people, you know, becoming rich, successful, very powerful. But she starts drawing too much on her sacral chakra because if she doesn't have a man to... Uh, feed her third chakra, she starts feeding her third chakra from her own second chakra, from the energy of her femininity. And you've noticed some successful women, not all, but many, who have forgotten to be feminine or who dress so sexy, they're so smart, they're so successful, but like men do not feel magnetically attracted to them. For some reason, men just don't notice them. They notice them as another man. Because then, if a woman increases too much her third chakra on her own and increases it just because she's competing to you know into the world to big successes she draws she takes the energy from her feminine chakra up and for some women this is the path some women is this is what they will prefer for some women will have to do this for five six years they still they reach a certain uh, social status the third chakra which gives them more freedom to do something which is more fulfilling for them. But it doesn't mean that women who have career cannot be sexually, femininely attractive. They can, as long as this career, the third chakra, is something that they emotionally is emotionally fulfilling for them. So then there is a, a healthy rotation of the energy, in a sense, you know, uh, from one chakra to the other. Uh, and it's not only the chakra of power and success and competing in a men world, taking all their feminine energy up, uh, taking, you know, and, and depriving them and they have less relationship, less attraction from men. You know, they get more and more masculine, even if they don't look physically masculine, just in their behavior, they become too proactive. Do, do, do. Third chakra is about doing, achieving, making big things happen. I mean, there is the feminine energy is passive, is relaxing energy. And you can, if you have a career that is very masculine, very, <clears throat> very overly competitive, and it does not give you much emotional satisfaction, which is not very creative, then you deplete the sacral chakra. But some women, uh, which is rare, but they exist, they, they go into careers that are, you know, that give them a lot of social status, but they're also very creatively fulfilling, and they're, they're emotionally fulfilling, because... If it's not emotionally fulfilling, emotional fulfillment is the sacral, the special chakra of the woman. Uh, if the career is not emotionally fulfilling, they keep drawing from the emotional happiness and they don't feel emotionally happy with themselves over long periods of time. But if the career they're doing is something they truly love, it's something that truly nourishes their feeling center, which is the sacral chakra, then both chakras become powerful and the woman can be successful and also femininely magnetic. And you see there are some women in Hollywood or you know, everywhere in the world that have seen this. It's more rare, but you know, if there is a man there to rotate this energy is easier, or, if, uh, or sometimes a woman really has to cut off her sex life for a few years to achieve great things. And some women fully choose to stop their feminine magnetic energy, uh, to use it for, for big things like Mother Teresa, like women in government, like women that run multi-million businesses, or even women who renounce sex life uh, fully, who renounce their femininity and sexuality fully, because their mission in this life is different, and they need to, you know, to, to draw the powerful energy of the sacral, the creative, into... Uh, achieving big things, into achieving social status, into changing the world in some way. 
Uh, but if they're continuing doing it for a long time and they don't find emotional satisfaction from this work or from this career, it really depletes their feminine power. It really starts giving them health problems as well. You know, so it's very important. Find yourself, if you want to be successful as women uh, and not deplete your feminine energy, find something that is more creative, that gives you emotional satisfaction. For example, a woman might be a great... Uh, two women, one is a teacher, the other one is a teacher. Uh, and one is just dislikes working with children, they exhaust her, she just draws from her feminine energy, she feels less and less feminine, less and less desirable, and less and less success with men. The other one is a teacher, but she's born to do it, she loves it. She keeps attracting the right attention because there is the right flow of energy there. She doesn't deplete her sacral all the time, you know. Uh, and But sometimes a woman, how does she exhaust the sacral? Another way. So one way is she only worries about survival. There is no one to help her there or she, she never makes her finances well enough. She's always on the point of losing security in her life, you know, always trying to make things survive, you know. This depletes it. Or getting overly ambitious, competing with men all the time in masculine environment, uh, forgetting to relax, always do, 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 achieve, 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 you know, uh, go to the gym, take the children, uh, go to your high-flying career, you know, and you forget again, you draw from your feminine energy and you stop attracting masculine men because plus and plus will always reject each other. If a woman is more masculinely charged, she will always pull men who are masculinely charged, alpha men, successful men, they would, you know, they would not notice her. It's not that she's fantastic. The, the man would feel, would feel notice someone who has, a, a woman who has strongly developed sacral chakra. Uh, and how does a woman also waste her sacral chakra? So either work, 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 no time to fill the sacral chakra. And I'll tell you how to fill the sacral chakra after that. What activities, exercises, and way of lifestyle can make help you fill your sacral chakra. So even if you're in a very busy career, or even if you're striving for survival, you can balance it and increase it so you can attract a more, um, you know, balance, more happy relationships with a more successful man as well. And you, you have more self-love as well. Another way a woman can give her sacral chakra away energy is by sleeping with many different partners. Because a woman usually has enough energy for one male. Uh, and if this male is someone who is in a healthy relationship with he her, who gives her back, who is ambitious, who provides, who, 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 you know, who doesn't always only take, this man will become so successful and he would also help her become so successful herself. This is great. This is when men become very successful, when they have a woman like that. But if a woman gives to too many men, maybe she has different sleeping partners, or maybe she has a lover, she's married, lovely husband, doesn't feel attraction towards him much, so she starts sleeping with another lover, so she gives her power, her energy to another man. But this man charges up his solar uh, third chakra, becomes more successful, and she's looking how him and his family, they get a better house, he gets a better career, while her and her family, her husband is getting less and less successful. Uh, she's feeling less and less feminine, attractive, more drained, more unhappy. Or even if she doesn't have a husband, she's a lover of someone, say, someone rich. So she gives him from her sacral chakra. He gives her, say, he's, he's married. He gives her financial stability, security, you know. So he fulfills the first responsibility. So she starts generating, you know, her feminine sacral energy and she starts giving him love and sexual intimacy and feminine care and love but he doesn't return back with the third chakra to her he doesn't give her back status he gives the status to his family to his wife he gives the status uh, his life starts to blossom so it's kind of unfair you know men can take their energy from different women you know they can take it from I'm not telling to men now, go and get yourself lovers, but they can, if they don't get it from their wife, they'll get it from a lover, you know. Especially if he's ambitious and successful, women will be drawn to that. Uh, and, but the woman who is someone's lover, she might get the initial, you know, being survival thing that is fulfilled financially, but she never gets the third chakra, the return back of, um, of, of status, of um, 
being able to do more and more in life, you know, so she, there is like, again, she, ta- she gives her energy away. Or if you have many different partners, this happens. So that's another way to give away your sacral energy. Uh, another way to give your sacral energy away is, we said, um, yes, I think we mentioned all the ways, and now I want to tell you how you can generate more sacral energy in you as a woman. Let's see. Now let's see ways how you can generate sacral womb feminine magnetism energy and with it you can attract not only power within yourself, magnetism, adorers, followers, it's just your whole life as a woman improves overall. So one of the first thing is sacral power, the sacral chakra is water. So let's start with the mechanical ways. It's the element water rules here. A woman who is dehydrated will have less feminine magnetism. So it's very important for women to drink water. I know it's something so stupid and silly, but believe me, this generates more energy into the sacral. Drink more water, try not to be cold. It's a warm, moist place, the second chakra. Uh, Room temperature, warmed up water. Keep hydrated. Take baths. You can take water into your body by baths, by hydrating with certain masks, by making sure you keep moisture into your body. You know, uh, another way is uh, eating moisturizing foods, you know, eating like more cucumbers, making moisturizing masks everywhere. Uh, Foods foods that have moisture in them, I'm not saying Coca-Cola, but um, fruits and vegetables, this really blossoms the second chakra. All those Fruits and vegetables, they have so much, um, fruits are ruled by the second chakra, that rules also Jupiter, Jupiter rules fruits, so fruits, beautiful juicy fruits, they generate so much, uh, much more life, not cooked food, raw food, raw fruits and vegetables, have your five a days, try to have them either gently steamed or raw if possible, you generate this moisture and water for the sacral chakra, that's one mechanical way, second mechanical way, squeezing of the muscle, you can generate energy, you can learn over time. This is the muscle of your vagina, I don't know what it's called, but squeezing it. And at the beginning you might not be able to squeeze it for longer than less than a second. But if you do it over a few months, you can keep the muscle squeezed for a minute almost. And this generates this mechanical movement of this muscle there, and you you do it with the breathing. On in-breath, squeeze the muscle and try to see how, you can, how long you can keep it. On out-breath, release the muscle. And imagine when you in-breathe, powerful energy comes. You're breathing in light from here. It goes to your sacral womb. You keep it till you come. Release the muscle down. The energy comes out again from your third eye. But it comes down to here. Uh, and over time... Even if, say, you're going on a date and you want to have more magnetism around you, feminine sexual magnetism, just make 20 squeezes. But uh, you, can, uh, you can vacillate between fast 20, uh, fast 10 and slow 10. And this generates, it almost opens up your pupils, it generates this feminine magnetism of, of, of uh, feminine power. Uh, and a man can immediately feel, you know, very much drawn towards you. This, you generate this feminine, yin, yin, negative energy that you need. Uh, <clears throat> so this is one thing you can carry on doing. So water, fruits, you know, moisturizing. And, but these are more mechanical ways. In the long run, what matters the most, these are short, quick fixes. But they are also important because we're in physical bodies. But there are ways that overall you can generate such power, so much energy here. And there... Let's talk about those ways. First of all, <clears throat> creativity. The, this is the creative chakra. If a woman's life is devoid of creativity, her feminine power disappears. And I'm not saying that you have to be a painter or a singer, but still it's a thing to remember that all the kings would be so much attracted to those actresses, uh, to those ballerinas back in the past. They had, through their creativity, they had this magnetizing you know, and so many men are attracted to women in the arts, you know, and uh, 
uh, actresses or singers. They have this powerful generating uh, solar uh, um, sacral chakra energy in them. But you don't have to be a film star. You don't have to be a singer. I have not a single creative bone in myself, but I'm doing a job that is very creative. Uh, I'm, uh, I have to think constantly of things and it charges you up, you know. Uh, and it doesn't even have to be drawing or painting, but it's good if you don't have a creative hobby and you're a woman, if, you, if your job is very dry and um, right brain activity, which is, you know, the calculating and which is the rational part of the brain, if your job is constantly connected to that, maybe something administrative, very analytical, very uh, masculine in energy, rational, you have to find yourself a creative hobby. And one of the best ways is dance. Because dancing especially, dancing that generates movements with the, sec the lower part of the body. This generates so much energy in this area. It's again one of the mechanical ways together with the squeezing of the muscle. So, or any kind of dancing. Dancing is creative. Uh, I knew a woman and she was okay, you know, not much success. And she started going to dancing lessons. And uh, we went to a party, we met her there, and all the men kept looking and they were saying there's something changed about her. It hasn't even changed her body, but the energy that she exuded. And she said, I don't know what happened. She said, I started doing this Africa tribal dance, and it has a lot of rotation of the hips and a lot of, t t t you know, this, the energy that is generated into the womb. She said, it's just, it's magical. Men are so attractive. So even something as simple as going to dancing lessons or maybe pottery lessons or something or drawing or something creative that involves your left brain activity, was it the creative part of the brain? And if you are not into a creative job and if you not have no interests, you know, into any kind of creative activities and you can't find anything like that, force yourself. But if you cannot, then another way is to stay present in the moment. Because feminine energy is energy of passivity. It's not an energy of doing, doing, doing. You know how many women, they'll be, say, um, checking their women, uh, emails at work while thinking uh, how they have to pick up the kids from school or they'll be uh, eating while thinking what are the next tasks I have to do. So they're halfway with their consciousness in something they're doing. I'm one of those people. I have all my planets in masculine signs, you know. I'm one of those people that much stronger upper chakra. So I have to do those things, much more stronger masculine chakras in me. I'm all about the survival, about the, you know, success in the world. So my, my feminine chakra is weak. So what I do is I dance and I do those exercises. And I try and stay present in the moment whenever possible. So when you're eating, eat. Look at the food. If your thoughts start going towards, again, something about your work or something else, come back to the food or don't eat and watch TV at the same time. Or if you're going for a walk, go for a walk. You know, look at the sky or just do something that makes your mind not skip all the time. Just focus in the present moment. A good way is um, look at the cloud passing by and follow it. Your thoughts might go, start running again and you want to do something, especially if you're like me you're always doing Go back to the cloud. Five minutes. Five, ten minutes a day. Focus on something. You know, this is the energy of staying present in the moment. You generate this through meditation. People who are good at meditation, I'm not good at meditation. I can do active meditation. I'm too masculine. Uh, and my active meditations are, uh, you know, doing something and focusing on it. Some people are better at that. So instead of trying to focus not to think or on your breath, which is proper meditation, do something that you at least enjoy more, but put all your focus into it. Don't get distracted into other things. So you generate more feminine power like that. And this balances your feelings. If your feelings are unbalanced, your feminine chakra is out of order. Uh, and why are our feelings unbalanced? Because we are not present in the moment. Say, one moment happy, one moment sad. One thought takes you here, one thought takes you here. Women who live in their heads, they really weaken their feminine power. Women who all the time live in their heads, they weaken their feminine power. So they need to get time to get in touch with their body, to feel their body. If they feel anger, allow to feel it. Don't indulge in it. Don't go in a fit on the floor, but don't try to block it. 
Don't try to, oh, I'm stressed, I'm angry. Oh, give me a cigarette, give me a, oh, let me get drunk. Ah, now I'm okay. The drinking dehydrates the body, takes away your feminine power. Drinking is fire. It, it, it drains the watery energy from you. Uh, smoking as well. I've done all of these things because I have such, I used to have a very weak sacral chakra. Now, over five years, I've been building it up and it's, it's starting to work, you know. But, you know, when, uh, in, instead of doing, calming our emotions with addictions, with, you know, do something healthy to balance your emotions. And the healthy thing is focus on one thing while you're doing, have a creative hobby, or earth yourself. This works so well for me. Take off my shoes, go out on the lawn, say 10, 15 minutes on the grass. You're earthing yourself, you're connecting with feminine energy. The earth has feminine energy and the earth's surface is very much full by negative ions. And this is what generates the yin energy, the, the creative feminine energy in us. And when we sit on the earth or when we walk on the earth or you can just sit there uh, on the grass, on the earth or the grass, you start taking those negative ions. Uh, that the, the earth was polarized by the sun. The sun is the masculine energy that was giving to the earth. And it polarized it with negative ions. And then you take those negative ions in you and you balance yourself. After 10 minutes of doing this, wow, I cannot explain how quickly my emotions are balanced. I used to balance my emotions with, ooh, you know, <laughs> or by doing crazy stuff or, you know, going and shouting at the man or whoever got me angry. And I generate even more masculine energy. So my, I deplete even more my feminine chakra. No, take a step back. This is the female power. Go on the grass. Take a few deep breaths. Look at the cloud. You know, stop at something. You know, say, that's it. Give yourself five, ten minutes to just fill your feelings and fill your body. When you're having a shower, fill the water on you. When you're having a bath, Take baths. This is very good to generate feminine power. When you're having a bath, have the bath. Talk about, feel about the water. How does it feel on your nipples? How does it feel on your body? How does it feel? How does it make you feel? If feelings and emotions come to the surface, don't block them. Watch them pass by like clouds, you know. And over time, little by little, you'd find yourself much more emotionally balanced. Because when you're emotionally balanced, this is when your sacral chakra is lit up. It's powerful. And man, get attracted like butterflies or like bees to honey to a woman who is emotionally balanced. Another fantastic way to emotionally balance feelings. Women who are like, ooh. You know, it doesn't mean don't be feeling. Because women who are not feeling, they block their feelings. They're not, they haven't balanced their feelings. They block them. They're the two extremes of unbalanced second chakra is either you don't feel any feelings or don't show them. So you're like this warrior to succeed in life. I'm a strong woman. I'm, you know, nothing makes me sad. No, no. This is, this, 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 you block the feelings. You, you exhaust the power of your feminine chakra. You do not attract man. You repel man in a sense energetically. Or too much feelings. Like feelings like a roller coaster. One moment up, one more ooh, crying, laughing. <laughs> I'm more of this type, you know. And this is again unbalanced chakra. So do it with earth walking. Earth yourself. Take a bath. Give yourself 10-15 minutes a day time when you can be with yourself. Just fill your body. Anchor yourself in your body rather than in your mind about thinking or doing something. Uh, and Anchoring yourself in your body, just feel, or sometimes give five, ten minutes, like a meditation, but it's more active in a sense uh, that you just feel what's happening in your body. Your heart is beating or whatever it is, just, just feel it. This is very anchored. This gen generates a really powerful um, uh, sacral energy for the woman. Uh, and this is part of the self-respect. This is the chakra self-respect, you know. If a woman is emotionally balanced, she has self-respect to herself. She gives, how do you give your respect to yourself? By, uh, if a woman doesn't have a strong sacral chakra, she doesn't have self-respect. No matter how beautiful she is, no matter how sexy she looks, no matter what trick she does, a woman without self-respect will attract a man who is not giving her self-respect. And you give yourself self-respect by taking care, loving care of yourself. 
So basically, even the secret to your husband being more successful, your partner, is first you having more self-respect for yourself. So you generate this powerful feminine energy, you give it to him and he succeeds more in life as well. Or if you want to succeed more in life, to generate more of the sacral chakra and bring it up into your own creative projects, into your own big, you know, uh, big projects for life, you know, then you need again to give yourself this time for self-pampering, for self-love for and self-pampering doesn't mean go and eat a tub of ice cream self-pampering is make a lovely salad you know uh, go to do gentle exercise exercise is very much helps a woman to center herself in the body rather than in the mind and to generate sacral energy but not too extreme sports because then you generate male energy sports which are more gentle maybe a bit of swimming maybe walking an hour maybe some pilates, maybe some dancing, a sport that is more femininely inclined, so to speak, a sport which is uh, too, too masculine, like going kicking, you know, it, it again generates more masculine energy in the woman. So you need like some feminine more, uh, you can do the masculine sports as well if your body needs it, uh, but you have to make sure that you have also some kind of a physical exercise that uh, is more femininely centered that I mentioned. Okay, let's see. Another thing, and I think this is the most important thing, how to generate feminine energy, is God, is spirituality. This is one of the centers of faith and devotion. And if you develop this faith with a higher power, you stop fearing about survival. Even if you're in a very difficult financial situation, even if you're struggling to, and living day by day, if you have powerful faith and if you develop some spiritual practices, the fear falls away, so the lower chakra doesn't anymore detract from the feminine chakra from you. Uh, because you believe God will provide for me, or Mother Mary, pray to Mother Mary, to a feminine goddess as well, this very much helps, you know. Uh, but I, I personally, when a woman in ancient Vedic book said, if a woman cannot attract a good man who is successful, who is faithful, who is loving, he should stop trying to attract a man and she should start taking care of her spiritual development. Because when she generates spiritual merit and uh, it gives, it balances her feeling. Basically, when a woman has strong spiritual practice, whether it will be some kind of meditation, whether it will be some kind of prayer, whether it will be some kind of corner with a few stones with a few candles that she does to some goddess or to I personally pray to Jesus Christ so I have and to Mother Mary I'm Christian but you can be from any other religion I have my little uh, place where I put makeup I have a few icons a few stones a few candles and I go in the morning there for five ten minutes I speak with my voice to God or you can do it quietly I make a conversation with him or her and this gives me like confidence that I'm supported throughout the day. It is, this spiritual practice has been one of the life turning events in my, you know, energy turning uh, events in me. And because it, it kind of, the, it gives me emotional balance. And it really, you attract positive energy from above. And this positive energy, basically you tap directly into, rather than having to generate this energy, feminine womb energy, you given it directly from God. But you have to, with practice, even if it doesn't feel natural to you initially, after two, three weeks of practicing, the first thing you'd want to do in the morning is, let me say my prayers, let me have my five, ten minutes quiet with my higher power. You can just envision a white beam coming up and focusing here and filling it, filling you up with energy. So you tap directly into God. You don't have to generate it with tricks. and <laughs> but It's good to do it with the other mechanical ways, but this is the fastest way as well people who are more spiritually inclined and then when a woman so the best advice for a woman who has problem with men or attracting right men or good men create a strong spiritual practice do some of those other things that i talked about some creativity uh, some of the mechanical ways water self can self-respect if you do not respect yourself i mean wow it's you cannot expect a man to do it. I remember this friend that I told you that all oh, men give her millions, you know. She, they, without her asking, hundreds of thousands, presents. And she's an okay-looking girl, but she's not like someone you think, okay, wow. Uh, and she was doing, without knowing all these things. 
and she was doing without knowing she was, you know, she, she had spiritual practice. She was someone who would love to sit in the park and stay in the moment. She would meditate. She would love to go to the gym and do some pilates, some dancing. She did belly dancing, interestingly enough. And she drank like three liters of water as well, you know. And uh, the orange color also, the color, the second chakra color is orange. And uh, women who, uh, if you want to charge up more of your second creative chakra, uh, you can wear orange clothes, for example, because they, they, you know, generate more energy. And the second chakra is the chakra of joy and happiness. And if a woman cannot be joyful and happy, she would not attract a man. Uh, should not attract men, you know, easily. Sometimes a man can be drawn to a moody, rainy, blue woman, you know, to want to save her. But if she's always like that, sooner or later he'll find a lover. Sooner or later she'll just feel like a failure that he couldn't uplift this woman, you know. So a woman, to attract a good man, she should have this inner joy within herself, which generates more and more feminine energy. And you generate feminine uh, inner joy by spiritual practices, by... Um, balanced living in a sense by taking care of yourself pampering physically you know of, of the food i know it's a lot of hard work it's a lot of different things uh, <clears throat> but otherwise it's the path of suffering otherwise uh, and by um, this inner joy why does a man go and find a lover if the wife is always preoccupied with material practical matters or is too ambitious and she doesn't give him this generates this inner fire of joy and pleasure, you know, if she doesn't have to give it, the man cannot generate this fully within himself. He go and takes it for a woman, from a woman. Uh, so learn to be, to, to basically give yourself pleasure and joy and to enjoy your body, no matter how your body looks. You just stay present with it, think about it, and you start loving it more. I mean, some of the most successful courtesans, I've seen pictures and paintings of them, they were not good looking, honestly, they were nothing special. But they all had this feeling that they're very, they first take care of themselves, they were always fun, they were not always fun, of course, you cannot always be fun, but when they knew how to be sweet and gentle, this is the feminine energy, not always women who are always trying to fight with men, to contradict men, they, they act from masculine chakras, from, you know, the, the third chakra, which is power struggles. I have a friend who is so gorgeous, she's so successful, and she's still, still single, and when I see her, how she speaks with men, she meets all those powerful men, because she works at really high level, and she, she gets attracted to someone, and she doesn't know any better, and, she, and she, men immediately find her very good looking but she starts telling him how to live his life she starts telling him on the first conversation she starts giving him ideas about his business how he can do it better contradicting him you know this is very criticizing or something or telling how much more she knows than him about whatever he's doing and this immediately she's acting from masculine energy not from feminine energy and this will no matter how attractive it is a powerful, another powerful, successful man, there will be a clash of two plus energies. So it will push away the man. So she, she says after 35 years of doing this, I'm starting to learn that I have to be more agreeable. Even if I don't agree, not 100% agreeable, at least 51%, a bit more than half agreeable, um, kind of uh, recognizing um, uh, the man. Um, giving him more attention in the sense the feminine energy is more passive, being more passive, not going chasing him, not going telling him how to do his work, but like, almost like, wow, this is, you know, appreciating him, looking at him, respecting him for, for his opinions. Of course, if you disagree with something, everyone, every man would be bo bored with a woman who is always agreeable, who is always, you know, everything, whatever you see. But if she's 51% like that, wow, or 50, or 60%, you know, this is perfect. She can have 40% clashes and, you know, some kind of a disagreements with him and, uh, or be masculine in a sense. Uh, but if it's more than 50% for the woman, it's just, it, it, re it immediately, uh, the two magnets uh, repelled. And people say, well, these are such outdated beliefs. Now we live in a modern society, but we live in physical bodies. 
Till the time we no longer need incarnations in this physical body, the male polarity will be plus, the female polarity, it's a world of polarities, the duality, that's why it's the physical world. And you, these are physical laws, you cannot help it. If you are positively charged as a woman, if you are doer, doer, um, get her, get her, do things all the time for the man or take over the world and forget to be a woman, which is passive, receptive, receiving, a woman, a man bonds to a woman more by giving. It's psychologically proven. A woman, if a man invests more into a relationship, if he invests more of caring for the woman, more of, even if it's on the financial level, or, you know, some kind of other emotional level investment, uh, he will feel more bonded to the woman because the man is symbolized by the sun. The sun is the masculine energy. The sun gives, gives, gives. So this is his job. This is the man's job to give, give, give. You know, a woman is symbolized by the moon. The moon's job is to reflect the sunlight, to receive. So a woman to attract a powerful man, strong man, you know, a loving man, uh, she needs to be receptive towards him. She needs to be uh, more of the feminine qualities, not fully, but at least 51% to show some of those feminine qualities. Uh, and some women that are very powerful, they haven't developed their sacral chakra much. And their third chakra, masculine, is uh, very developed, very successful. Something they would, they would attract a man with a weak sacral uh, uh, third chakra, basically, power. So maybe these will be men who would stay at home, would take care. Some women would solve this imbalance this way, but they would never feel properly feminine. They would be like the leader, like the man in the relationship. And some women are okay with that, you know. There's, there's nothing bad in that. It's just more, uh, it gives more health repercussions or emotional fulfillment repercussions for the woman. She doesn't feel so emotionally fulfilled, you know. When a man pampers a woman, he gives her, you know, the second uh, chakra, the first chakra, which is not only security and third chakra, like status, pampering, luxuries in life. A woman feels a lot of self-respect. She feels a lot of feminine power coming into her. Which woman won't feel feminine and amazing when a man gives to her pampers naturally but if you don't have a man like that right now you have to do it for yourself you have to do this pampering to yourself as if you have the most amazing lover and your most amazing lover it's you <laughs> and you yourself are pampering yourself and are doing for you what uh, this lover or man would do and then you would attract the right man you know you'd attract the man who do those things for you so i'm not gonna go into it anymore but you know I enumerated a lot of things for staying for creating the sacral energy and I hope I have been helpful for you uh, and uh, you know thank you very much and please write to me what you think <laughs>